All right, in this video, this is a follow-up to the video I just posted yesterday on the dynamic gradient. Uh, what I'm gonna do here, I just want you to uh, watch this as I go through and apply that test that I did in the dynamic gradient video from yesterday. And I want you to look at these colors on the thermometer and the battery. They're gonna be much more vibrant, uh, no muddy transitions, and uh, yeah, just have a look at this. So the first one I'm gonna show you is the temperature. Notice the transitions of colors. It was very smooth looking and I'm gonna talk about that right here in a second. And then let's look at the battery. This is gonna be a nice transition from a red to a green. And yeah, before I dive into this tutorial, it's going to be real quick because it does uh, stem right off of the dynamic gradients I talked about yesterday, but we're going to be taking a different color approach. You know, I've been doing a lot of tutorials for quite a while now, and I'm still learning things, uh, stuff that I've actually used for years. For example, when I'm making thumbnails for my YouTube videos, I use Affinity Designer and we have, you know, the RGB. That was the tutorial I did yesterday. Well, there's this thing called HSV, Hue, Saturation, and Value. And I've used it a lot in Affinity Designer. And me being a math guy, I never really paid attention to what the numbers meant. And um, when I posted this video in Reddit yesterday, I did get a reply, and it was very valid. I, I appreciate you sharing this. I don't even want to try to pronounce your name, but anyway. But basically, what we're going to be doing, instead of using the RGB, red, green, blue channels, we're going to be using the HSV. And I'm also going to tie in some alpha. And maybe you did notice the circle at the beginning of the tutorial where it was kind of like fading out as it rotated around. So, um, yeah. You know, um, he did comment saying uh, complicated calculations. The calculations weren't that bad to begin with, and I'm still putting those calculations in there, and I still want to give you the flexibility to add this progress to anything that you want. So um, yeah, that was the post from yesterday. Maybe you read that over, but uh, dynamic gradients. This tutorial here used the RGB channels. We're going to use the hue, saturation, and value. So I did some reading last night and it makes a lot of sense mathematically. Uh, hue, saturation, and value. If we look at how this is broken up, the hue is going to be the colors. And this is going to allow us to, for example, here, you know, this light blue cyan or whatever, we can make a smooth transition from this light blue. And technically we can go all the way around this circle. But before I dive into that, let's talk about the angles. It goes from 0 to 360. Red is 0, and then 360 is technically going to be red again. Now, if you wanted to go from, say, red to green, what you could do is you could change your angle from 0 to 120, and uh, that's exactly what I'm doing for the battery. As a matter of fact, let me show you that right now. So I'm inside of that battery piece, and if I look at my H1, my H1 is red. That's that zero degrees. That's my hue. And then my H2 that I want to finish at is 120. Notice the 120 is green. And you can get different shades of green between 120 and 180 degrees. Now, what about the saturation and the value? The saturation that you see here, when saturation is zero, you're going to have a more white. And then as we raise the saturation up to a value of 100, or in some cases it may be one, you're going to see that true color popping out. And then the value down here, the value is zero. Up here, the value is 100% or one. Now at this website here, it explains it a little bit better. So the hue is the color, the saturation is the amount of gray from zero to 100%. So zero is that gray or white, one is that primary color, that color that we're actually you know, going after up here perhaps. And then the value is the brightness. Zero is completely black, 100 is the brightest and reveals the most color. So taking these three things into consideration, and looking at this uh, three-dimensional layout of it, your hue is your colors, your saturation goes from a gray or a white 
to the actual color and the value goes from a black which is really just dark up to the full color itself now this makes a lot of sense to me mathematically it's operating based on degrees and um, yeah, what this allows us to do is take out those muddy colors that I was mentioning yesterday in the RGB channels. Now, one more thing to mention here as well. If I come to this gradient circle, you can't even really see it because I have it set to gradually fade out. And notice as we start again, this is operating on seconds. If I go over to the globals for this circle, the alpha one, it starts off as a 100% visible, so to speak. And then the alpha two value, it's going to gradually fade out to an alpha value of zero, which means it's completely transparent. Now, if I were to raise this alpha two value up to 100, we're gonna see the exact same colors in this circle that we see in this rectangle because I have them operating on the same uh, basis of colors. But if I knock this alpha two back down to zero, you're gonna see this circle fade out. Pretty cool. And these transitions are nice and smooth. They're vibrant. We don't have that muddy transition in the middle like I mentioned for the RGB. And one more thing I want to show you, again, check out the RGB tutorial on how to use your own custom progress, whether it be music progress. I discussed that in the tutorial yesterday. I'll keep both of these linked together for your reference. And down here for this temperature one, notice my H1 is 180 and my H2 is 360. And now, you know, you can also adjust the saturation and the value. So let's look at this. Uh, for the temperature one, what I'm doing is I'm starting at a hue of 180. So I'm roughly in that green channel, kind of cyan channel. And I'm gradually transitioning to 360 degrees. So it's going to go from here to here, which is going to end up being a red, so to speak. But not only that, look at my saturation. I'm going from 50 to 100. So within that process, you know, I'm going from 50% saturation to 100% saturation, and I'm actually going around this way. It may be kind of hard to follow this, but uh, what I'm doing is I'm starting at right around this color, a uh, greenish cyan, 50% saturation, so somewhere right around here, and then I'm gradually transitioning up to this 360 degrees, going this way around, and if you saw me at the beginning of the video, maybe you did see that you know, lightish blue going into that magenta all the way up to that red for a hot temperature. Now I did leave my values at 100 for both the V1, my starting and my ending color there. So basically, you know, I'm right up here on the top layer. The value, if I had that set to 100, I'm right here on this top layer. But um, yeah, I like that three dimensional cutout of that. Also check out this website here or just pause the video and read over that, you know, the hue, the saturation and the value or brightness, so to speak. But um, yeah, there you have it. This is so much better. I really appreciate uh, the guy sharing this comment with me yesterday. I totally overlooked the HSV. Um, a few things I changed there. And now you have even more uh, ways to get those colors that you want. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.